Well, hello, that's me again. Today is March 23. It is Saturday and this is the next day from my last video, but you probably know by now why I am coming uh, on to you with the situation which we all know, which is a tragedy at the, of the terrorist act in uh, massacre of the uh, civilians in the Krokus City Hall and the burning down of this wonderful venue actually and the uh, part of the shopping mall which is attached to it. So um, before I proceed I have to really make a very clear statement uh, that I am not the guy who usually tries to go, you know, run uh, ahead of the uh, locomotive, if you wish, and try to speculate on things. That is why I always call on all people, especially people who listen to me, uh, to only refer to the professionals. Um, and we're talking about professionals, obviously, the level of uh, Ray McGovern, Larry Johnson, you know, people, uh, Scott Ritter, people who have the serious in intelligence background, and they have the, t the, the toolkit to figure things out. That is why, for example, I never run immediately after the event. I always, you know, wait and for their uh, professionals and for their case, uh, such as this the tragedy and the terrorist act in the Crocus City, to take its uh, course, so to speak. And guess what? It was very clear from the get-go what was going on there, but. I didn't want to rush to the conclusions. I waited, I took the pause, took the night uh, after that. And now the details of the whole situation begin to actually emerge. And surprise, surprise, you can bet your whatever behind on what was happening then. We will start obviously with the, uh, I'm going to be using only um, Russian uh, sources because uh, you cannot trust anything which comes out of the uh, crappy and you know sewer of the western corporate media and for that matter from some so-called alternative media as you already know and which is actually has a lot of um, uh, relation to what is going on now with the for example candace owen being fired from the daily wire which after that i'm pretty sure will go down in flames and good riddance of that but i want to forestall immediately if we talk about for example ben shapiro and people blaming Israel and Mossad on this thing which was happening in um, uh, Crocus City yesterday and uh, based only on the uh, idea that somehow this has to remove the focus from the atrocity and what crime, war crimes uh, committed by Israel in Palestine. And uh, yeah, sure that they even posted out some freak from one of the uber uh, right wing uh, parties in um, Israel uh, threatening Russia. I mean, please, I mean, they can do whatever they want. But the fact is, people will continue to focus uh, normal people, people who have consciousness and people who have any morality, unlike it is the case with all uh, uh, Western journalism, who have any morality, integrity left, they will continue to focus, obviously, on their uh, crimes against humanity in Palestine, uh, in Gaza, specifically. But well, obviously, it's not Israel. I don't think so. Plus, there are many other things which uh, indicate that it couldn't have been Israel because they wouldn't uh, really want to have a serious increase of Russian and Iranian presence in Syria. And this time, they will be doing some things which they didn't uh, before, didn't do before. So, and uh, in this particular case, they, you know, the method of the competing hypothesis, it's all fine and dandy, but here is what we start with and this is very very tragic but we already know that in this morning uh in the united states it's evening in russia uh the death toll from the terrorist attack in crocus has increased sadly to 133 uh killed people there are children among them and during the dismantling of the rubble in the crocus city hall concert hall the death toll as a result of the terrorist attack increased to 133 people the department of the uh, emergency uh, services uh, uh, confirmed to uh, major, you know, uh, through its own telegram channel, and uh, it is obviously 
tragic, nothing we can do about it, and we can only mourn people who uh, died there and those who have been there. Something like 93 people so far are still in hospitals from what I heard. But when we talk about that being non-Israel, here's where we begin to go into the, so to speak, neck of the wood. We will start obviously with this thing. <clears throat> U.S. condemns Moscow terrorist attack. It's good. It's good. I'm not saying that. But obviously, as always, especially with this clown Kirby, there is no indication, you know, that the attack has any connection to Ukraine. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby has said. <clears throat> I like the, the always those caveats. And the question here is not the fact that that's what I want to uh, really underline, the fact that uh, uh, prior to the elections there was uh, the uh, warning of the US embassy and British embassy by the way that uh, uh, to avoid British and uh, American citizens of any kind of large gatherings in expectation of some kind of the terrorist activity you know what it, it cuts both ways usually there is always the blanket statement by <clears throat> A State Department on this matter. So this in itself does not prove, obviously, the uh, culpability of the United States or uh, Great Britain, which is culpable. But I mean, this in itself is not not is nothing super duper special. However, this is, and if you remember. It was in January 31 when this lady, who is basically a supporter of terrorism and all kinds of genocidal uh, 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 actions on part of Ukraine, uh, warned Russia that U.S. Under Secretary of State Putin will get nice surprises on battlefield in 2024. As you can see yourself, it was stated uh, not far, not long ago, January 31, 2024. And here's the catch. Uh, Putin cannot get any nice surprises on the battlefield because obviously neither Victoria Nuland nor her hubby nor the cabal of the neocons, uh, they have any clue about real war. And actually it was very uh, the other way around that it was Ukraine which continues to get uh, nice surprises along the front line with losing horrendous number of its troops and uh, Western equipment. But that is a sort of the marker which we have to keep uh, in mind when talking about what have happened had happened and so well guess what let's go to the latest from uh, federal security services fsb and as was expected and it is now confirmed fsb reports 11 suspected uh, uh, suspects detained over terrorist attack uh, attack they are primarily of the Tajik nationality. They are the people from the what is called migrant communities, quote unquote. And what they say is the FSB, the following the bloodbath and uh, the popular concert venue, the perpetrators try to escape by car fleeing towards the Russian Ukrainian border, the FSB said on Saturday. The criminals intended to cross the Russia Ukraine border and had relevant contacts on the Ukrainian side. According to the agency, all four terrorists were arrested in Russia Bransk region with several hour, within several hours as the result of well coordinated actions by the security services and police. The, the detainees are now being transferred to Moscow, it added. Well, <clears throat> uh, some Ahmad guys also participated in capturing those guys, and you know what? I mean, don't really uh, make you know Chechens um, you know, of Mr. Kadyrov <laughs> being really. Uh, angry at you because I mean they guys well they cut one son of a gun uh, the ear and let them eat him uh, let him eat it before obviously transferring him to FSB so 11 people at all have been captured and as you already know and we already uh, as was expected there was a window for them waiting on the state border and between Russia and Ukraine aha uh -huh. so let's go further so we suddenly have this situation. Mr. Putin himself, while in his statement, and we'll talk about this statement, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the preparation of a window in Ukraine for the escape of shooters from Krokus. 
Four participants in the attack were detained near the border with Ukraine. In the West, they claim that the Islamic State is behind the terrorist attack. But the statement of the terrorists that appeared on the web turned out to be fake, as is most of the corporate media in the West. They are all fake or low lives or scumbags. They are no normal people. They don't have morality. They don't have any integrity. And of course, they started immediately in coordinated attempt across the board from London to Washington DC to New York Times push this ISIS narrative. It is all BS. It is all coordinated by the special services uh, such as CIA and of course MI6. Those are, you know, uh, people uh, in London and in the United States to basically shift the blame, which is obvious now. It is Ukraine and these are people who stay or stand behind Ukraine and coordinate all those attacks on Russian actually civilian uh, infrastructure. And now we have that actually most likely it is a MI6, possibly CIA who have their hands totally and you know up to their you know elbows in blood of innocent Russian civilians in their horrendous uh, terrorist attack. Now, why do we, uh, can, uh, can we talk about it? Well, here's Mr. Putin addressing the Russian nation today. And uh, as he states, and he actually details all perpetrators when he talks about that uh, 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 there was a window and the Ukrainian special services and people behind them have been involved directly. And he's talking about the fact of what's going to be done. All perpetrators, organizers, and masterminds behind this crime will get just and inevitable punishment. Whoever they are, whoever guides them, I repeat, we will identify and punish everyone who stands behind the terrorist who, uh, terrorist who prepared this atrocity, this attack on Russia, on our people, the president stated. Well, Mr. Medvedev actually, and don't treat him lightly, he went really kind of all out and we know Mr. Medvedev doesn't mean words anymore and when he speaks he actually expresses the opinion of the hugely important body uh, body of a political and military body in uh, Russia which is of course Security Council and he talks about terrorists understand only terror in response no trials or investigations will help it force uh, is not countered with force and that will uh, with executions of terrorists and a crackdown on their families he wrote noting that this was the way of the world death for death and that's what is coming in russia now as already they are big conscious of the major russian political party which is united russia or stated about duma the uh, legislature of the return of the capital capital punishment the death penalty will be discussed studied and as he already stated pretty much it will be returned so this is one part of this whole situation obviously you can expect now a severe crackdown on russia's immigration services and all those uh non-russian uh, uh non-russian citizens uh di diaspora and communities and especially from Middle Asia, because all those people hired in Turkey, allegedly by Ukrainian special services, have been uh, actually from Tajikistan. So, and uh, it's obviously not the fault of Tajikistan per se. Tajikistan actually is considering, considering Russia its uh, ally and things of this nature. So it's, uh, it's the fact that, yeah, you have uh, those bad people, but it also suddenly pushes through the, what was already in the making, the issue of solution on the process of the admitting any kind of the immigration from the former Soviet republics. And good for that. So sadly, it took 133 people killed to finally start dealing with this. And then, of course, we, uh, if you take a look at uh, the whole situation kind of in a broader sense, uh, you have to keep in mind that now, when it is very clearly understood that uh, it is SBU and Gore, which is uh, uh, main uh, intelligence directorate of the armed forces of Ukraine, uh, headed by the psychopath Mr. Budanov, that, you know what, 
and including their curators from MI6 and maybe CIA. I'm not sure about CIA, uh, as I already stated. That, but again, United States is the framework, uh, uh, you know, supporter of the terrorism because uh, the whole Kiev Nazi regime is primarily the creature of the Washington. But there is much more to it. So you have to understand people from MI6 and CIA who has been who have been involved with this directly, and of course uh, they are on a very shaky ground for a simple reason that Russian intelligence assets on the ground, including among people of Ingur and SBU most likely, they will know the names, they will be identified. And those guys or the, no, no, no SAS or, you know, Green Berets will help them now. God help, uh, you know, God save their souls, you know, as, um, you know, as Vladimir Putin stated, you know, um, my, ta you know, God will forgive them. My task is to bring them to God. And that's what's going to happen most likely. So they, those guys better go and do plastic surgery, remove their families from anywhere. They should run really because they will be hunted down and they will be killed or even delivered because this is the thing which is absolutely out of this world and we have now a very direct evidence of not only ukrainian uh special services but their curators uh who are directly involved in killing deliberately innocent russian civilians who went for the entertainment they went to listen to the very you know famous legendary russian soviet russian band rock band picnic they went in they paid them money they promised them whatever is necessary they provided them with the weapons including those caches where those weapons have been uh, uh, stored including those explosives and guess what we have the result obviously uh, in the incredible case of the hip hypocrisy London is strongly condemning, sure, France is strongly condemning, Paris, you know, they stand with Russian people and sympathy and things of this nature. Doesn't matter anymore. It would have been a good practice to like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Right now, Russians don't care. And that's the thing which they have to understand. And so they want blood of those who did this. And these 150 million people who want that. Well, except for Russian liberal opposition, because they applaud, you know, to, together with the uh, basically Washington establishment, any death of Russian children, women, men, what have you, any destructions, because they're genocidal maniacs, people without any morality, culture or education. So that's normal. What is not normal now that some of them will be, well, most likely all of them will be identified. And uh, yeah, there is no, you know, how to say it, term limits on that thing you know that's gonna be somebody will find them and when you look attentively who can do that ah oh my gosh uh, there are many believe me so and uh, they have to be ready to face justice and the justice will be for them swift and maybe even well maybe with a little bit of uh, how to put it poli politely torturing them in a moral sense and as Mr. Medvedev already stated, you understand that now Russia is returning back to normal practice of the superpower of hunting down those who are responsible to harming its civilians. It is one thing when they, uh, for example, provide weapons, which of course, including uh, actually attack Russian civilian infrastructure. Yeah, it's one thing we understand. This could be, you know, uh, 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 how to put it, uh, qualified, you know, if you wish to the hostile act it is the you know uh, operations against the some civilian infrastructure which is well it's a kind of gray zone so is the sabotage against the military targets it is sabotage it's not terrorism we have to keep in mind the uh, but now now the red line has been crossed and we expect now to see some very interesting developments including in Ukraine very soon and I think so we now can talk about the fact that Russia will be considering physical elimination of the whole Kiev regime. Because obviously Kiev regime, while being still guided and 
advised by their curators from London and Washington, is ultimately responsible for uh, executing the thing. And uh, will Mr. Zelensky die? We'll see. Mr. Budanov better run with his ugly wife. So, and so they should all run because they will be found and they will be killed. So, and um, this is just the start of it. Obviously, now people ask all kinds of questions about what Russia can possibly do. First, you, you have to understand that Russia is now at the peak. Uh, well, I don't think so. It's even the peak, actually. We, it's on the upswing. And I think so. Russia didn't reach peak yet uh, of the military production. But now, after all that, and suddenly uh, uh, um, um, conversations of Vladimir Putin regarding the possible of the uh, cordon sanitaire, uh, uh, which he spoke about a week ago, I, I, I believe, in one of his presses and conversation with uh, uh, I believe it, the Russian use or something like that. So he talked about this cordon. So now it's, uh, you know, absolute, you know, assured that Russians will, will pursue this. And again, if Russia didn't want, for example, to take Kharkov uh, uh, at this stage, probably she will now and she will wipe out the rest of the remnants of the armed forces of Ukraine. Uh, from the left bank uh, and um, so yeah what can I say it's um, it's a done deal I'm pretty sure it's just a matter of how it will be accomplished with the most economic uh, and less uh, 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 fewer casualties way from a Russian uh, point of view now what I didn't uh, um, mentioned last time when we uh, in my la latest video in yesterday uh, when talking about this whole situation with uh, for example, Russia beginning to turn off the lights now for everybody in Ukraine. Uh, and, you know, it was coming anyway. And speaking about all those uh, stupid rhetoric from Paris, which has nothing really behind it. The same as some people uh, write like, oh yeah, do you know what is, happens? They have the troops near Kiev or in Kiev, NATO troops. What NATO troops? You mean, I mean, some five, six hundred people of uh, even thousand, oh yeah, they will be killed. The Russians don't care, and that's what I'm trying to convey. It doesn't matter how many official NATO troops will be uh, actually sent to Ukraine, and wherever they will be uh, actually located or deployed, they will be killed. Russia doesn't care, and if NATO will do nothing, and that's the thing which people still continue to ignore when I talk about. And plus, that's what I'm uh, coming back to about my yesterday video. Guys, do you know where those half million plus of Russian troops is now additional troops? Yes, they are in the strategic reserve. Russia has actually, some people say it's more than 600,000. These are uh, people who actually do not fight on the front lines. They just sit back in the rear. They receive the old state-of-the-art equipment. They train. Some of them go through the fight on the front lines. Then they are rotated and, you know, brought back to recuperate. And uh, Russia creates now additional two armies and 14 other formations. So this is in response to, for example, uh, Finland and Sweden becoming part of NATO. So, and guess what those troops are for? Of course, they are just in case NATO decides to commit complete suicide, their task will be to meet them and destroy them. Doesn't matter if it's going to be a US troops, uh, whatever combination of European NATO troops or the whole NATO. But of course, you already know, United States is extremely explicit on this matter when they stated there will be no ground troops, American ground troops. Let Romanians, Poles, uh, French die there and they will die in industrial quantities is because Russia will have very little trouble basically wiping them out from the face of the earth. But then suddenly that's why it's so very funny to have the reaction from Europeans who are behind actually many atrocities and inspired including terrorism against Russians. Hmm, what happened? So make your own conclusion because that brings us to the last uh, conclusion, so to speak, or conclusive theory that in the end even this type of the atrocity act has some kind of the moral impact and political, major global political impact to the point that suddenly 
the Europeans have a sort of of the path back. They can walk back without, you know, uh, losing their faces, such as Mr. Macron, who still, you know, obviously ran himself into the corner, you know, and then suddenly he found himself facing the really, really unpleasant geopolitical future for him and his country. And then suddenly, against the background of this emotionally charged, charged event, they have the kind of path back, like, yeah, way back, say, you know what, yeah, yeah, we do not want to fight Russian civilians and things of this nature. So, who knows? But we know who did it, and we know what's going to happen to those who did it. And we are talking, of course, not about this uh, uh, 11 subhumans uh, who committed this uh, crime directly. We are talking about those who organized it and supplied and supported everything which was needed to kill 133 innocent Russian civilians, including children. And again, as I already stated, 9,300, or I mean, pardon, 93 of them are still in the hospital in different state of their health. You know, some of them are critical and very, uh, you know, uh, uh, horrible situation. So will they recover emotionally? Who knows? So this is what I wanted to tell you to uh, today. And uh, as always, uh, uh, just, you know, subscri subscribe to my channel and, uh, you know, stay safe. And what can I say? Uh, have a nice weekend if you wish. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.